Hello, I'm Cecilia Martinez. I'm a success engineer at Cypress, and this is testing NGRX actions and effects with Cypress. So why end-to-end -end testing for NGRX specifically? Uh, so I wanted to demonstrate how to validate NGRX store behavior when responding to actual user events in the browser. A lot of testing of NGRX currently is done with unit testing, and this can be very effective to ensure that you, know, you get the expected output when doing different actions and things in the store. Uh, but how does that hold up when your user's actually using your application? So that's what I wanted to demonstrate today. It uh, also allows you to have more complete and effective end-to-end -end tests. So typically with end-to-end -end tests, you're validating and making assertions on things that are happening in the DOM. By testing your NGRX store with your end-to-end -end tests, you can dive even deeper and ensure that the state management of your application is functioning as it should be. Additionally, when I started researching uh, for this talk, I found a lot of great existing resources for unit testing with NGRX, but very little on end-to-end -end testing uh, for NGRX. So I wanted to add something new and not essentially redo what a lot of those really great resources that already exist are doing. So speaking of those existing uh, resources, I leveraged one of those for the application that we're gonna be testing today. So our application under test is a favorite TV show app, and you can find the test code at github.com slash Create slash this.ngrx testing. And so this application, it is a fork of this.ngrx testing, which was an application used for the JavaScript Marathon Easy Angular Unit Testing and NGRX presentation. Highly recommend uh, giving that a watch for examples on unit testing with NGRX. And then we're gonna be using that same application for Cypress tests with NGRX. So like I mentioned, it's a favorite TV show application. And it has a very, you know, some basic functionality, kind of similar to a to-do app, right? So you can favorite a TV show, unfavorite a TV show, and you can also remove one from the list. So I wanna talk about the testing approach and the different applications that we're gonna to cover today. So the first step in testing your NGRX store is making sure that it's exposed to Cypress. And you also want to make sure it's only exposed when you're in a testing environment or when you're using Cypress. So we'll talk about how to do that. We'll also talk about how to assert on actions. So we'll be able to validate that correct actions have occurred and that you know any uh, props that were passed through also were correct. We're gonna talk about asserting on effects, so making sure that the expected side effects uh, occur. And we're also gonna talk about how you can use Cypress to actually dispatch actions in your NGRX store. So all of this methodology I uh, did not make up myself. It comes from a Cypress blog post about testing Redux. So applying the same methods for testing Redux, but specifically using here for NGRX, which operates a little bit differently and has some additional functionality. So like I mentioned, uh, the first thing that we need to do is expose our, NGX store, our NGRX store to Cypress. So within our app.component.ts, so again, this is the application code. This is not within your test code. You do need to do this on the application code. So in our you know, app component that we're exporting, essentially what we're doing is on line four, you can see here that we're just stating that if the window is Cypress, so again, if the application is running in Cypress, we want to expose the store. So we're gonna say that the window.store is our store. And so that this.store is essentially just our NGRX store for our application. And again, we're saying if we're in Cypress, if window.cypress, then please make the window store match up with our application store. And that allows us to be able to tap into it while we're running our tests. All right, so let's get into some of the actual magic that you can do with Cypress. And so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is asserting on NGRX actions. So this is an example of one of our actions in our application. So this is in our actions.ts file within our NGRX store folder. And we have a, a get all success action that essentially has a type of shows API, get all shows success, and it accepts a prop of shows, which is an array of the shows that are displayed on the page. So in this case, we have four TV shows that were displayed on the page, 
And when the page loads, uh, there's a get all success action with a type, again, of shows API, get all success, and it accepts the props of, of shows. So how can we test this? Uh, so you can assert on the type of action last dispatched in the NGRX store, as well as the value of the props that are passed through. So what this looks like is in our test code, you may see uh, typically what you would have to do, right, is validate that we have four shows. Uh, just, and we're making a validation here on the DOM. So we're saying, you know, sci.get data size show card, we have four of those, it should have length of four. That's a kind of a way to just validate that the, everything is displaying correctly in the DOM. But if we want to go further and actually validate via our NGRX store that that action dispatched correctly, we can, in our test code, tap in to the store. So we can say that this, on the window, our store is the window store. So we're declaring that variable. And then we're accessing the action that last ran in our store. So we can do that by tapping into store.actionsobserver and then the underscore value. So again, this is the last action that dispatched in our NGRX store. Uh, we can also access the props. So in this case, we have the uh, value of the action and we're doing dot shows. But again, if you had any other props that you were passing through, you'd be able to grab the value from those uh, by just passing that through uh, with the dot. So say, for example, in addition to shows, we also had a user list. So then we, and, and that was a prop that was accepted on our action. So then we could do underscore value dot users and access those that way. So in this case, once we've kind of tapped into the store and grabbed those variables, we can assert on them. So in this case, we're saying that we expect the action type to equal shows API get all shows success. And again, that's because we're expecting that the last action that was dispatched by the NGRX store to have that type. We're also making an assertion on the prop. So we're saying that the shows, we expect to have a length of four. And again, that's the prop that was passed through the action coming from our service, and we expect that to have four shows. And so rather than just asserting on the DOM that yes, there's four shows appearing, we can actually validate that the NGRX store processed that correctly. All right, so asserting on effects. It's kind of a similar uh, concept and process here. So first, I want to just uh, talk about one of the effects that we'll, the effect that we're going to be testing. So again, this is in our application code uh, in our effects.ts file. We have this uh, favorite show clicked action, and we would are creating an effect on it that whenever a favorite shows clicked, we expect that a favorite show success action with the correct show ID to have occurred. So again, here on line three, we can see that we're saying any actions of type favorite show clicked. And then essentially uh, we're expecting favorite shows success action, and that is taking a show ID. So that is the effect that we're gonna be testing on. How do we do that? So uh, first thing we wanna do, and I'm gonna break this down into sections because this is a bit of a longer test. So the first thing that we do is we need to set things up for our test. And in this case, we are essentially going to select two shows as favorites. So we're um, doing that two different ways. The first way we're selecting the favorite show via the NGRX store, and I'll explain in uh, just a few minutes how to actually make that happen. And then we're just selecting the second show via the DOM by clicking on an item. And again, if we were doing you know, our normal end-to-end -end tests and we wanna validate all right, we, uh, we selected two favorite shows. Uh, we should have a length of two for our unfavorites. But again, we wanna go further and we wanna say, all right, NGRX store, did the effect occur the way that we expect? Not just in the DOM, but in our actual state management tool in our store. So again, we're gonna confirm the expected effect completed via NGRX. We're going to start by getting the most recent action from the store. And again, this is going to get the most recent action dispatched by your NGRX store. Uh, so we're essentially just naming the store. We're grabbing that action. After that, we're going to confirm that the effect expected after favorite show clicked occurred. So again, we dispatch favorite show clicked. 
And we did that in two different ways. We did it via the NGRX store, which I'll explain in just a moment. And we also did it via the DOM by clicking on an element. So what happens is whenever we dispatch favorite show clicked, according to our effect, we would expect that the favorite show success action to dispatch. So we can validate that once we've dispatched this favorite show clicked, the last action shouldn't be favorite show clicked. The last action should be favorite show success. Because if our effect is working properly, whenever we dispatch favorite show clicked, automatically our store should know to dispatch favorite show success. So that's what we're doing here. We're asserting that, hey, favorite show success was the last action that dispatched from our store. In addition, we're also validating that the show ID is equal to two. So again, we're, val we're asserting on the actual type of the action that was dispatched, and then also the prop that passed through. So in this case, the show ID, the last one that we clicked on with favorite show clicked had an ID of two. So we would expect that our action to also have a show ID of two. All right, so I talked about how when we dispatched our favorite shows clicked action, we did that two different ways. One was the uh, traditional end-to-end -end testing method that you're probably used to, where you essentially get the element on the DOM and you click on it. And when you click on that element, um, our NGRX store dispatches that favorite show clicked action. This is exactly how it would happen when your user is driving your application. The other way that we can do this is actually tapping into our NGRX store and dispatching the action without using the DOM at all. Uh, you can do this for a couple different reasons. So one of the reasons that you would use this is if you have some kind of complex state management that you need to set up that isn't efficient to use the DOM to do that. Uh, you can, for example, if you don't need to test that functionality in the DOM because you have an existing test elsewhere that already tests favorite show clicked and you don't need to actually click the button to set that up, then you can dispatch an action in your NGRX store to set the state up exactly how you want it to prepare for your test. It also gives you just another additional level of validation that when you're dispatching effects within the store and not just in the UI, so that you're getting the expected outcome. And the, the, the difference is that if you click on a button in the DOM, you may see things render properly, but the state in your NGRX store may not actually be what you expect. So by dispatching the action directly in the store, you have a little bit more fine-grained control uh, in, of over what's happening. So let's take a look on how to do that. It's actually a lot simpler than you would think. So within our test code, essentially we're saying sci.window, and again, this is a way to just grab the window of the browser that your application is running in. And you are saying that it's store, you're grabbing onto that, and you are invoking a command so you can use the invoke Cypress command and pass through dispatch with an object that contains the type of the action that you want to dispatch and then also any required props. So if you have a required show ID, for example, for our uh, favorite show clicked action, you need to pass that through. Uh, for example, if we were doing the uh, get all show success action, we would need to pass through that shows prop or that, an object for our shows prop in order for that to dispatch correctly. So in this case, again, we're dispatching the all shows favorite show. And again, that's the type of the action, the type. And then we're also passing through as our first, um, the show ID, which is a required prop for that action. And again, uh, what you'll do is in your test code, you'll just dispatch this action and that sets up your test uh, in order to prepare for assertion. So this is only part of the picture. Once you, and again, we can see that in our previous code, we use this to select the first favorite show via NGRX. So we said that our, in our window, we wanted to dispatch that action to favorite the show. Then we did the second one just using a regular click, and then we were able to confirm that and validate it with our store. All right, so let's take a look at the Cypress test runner in action and uh, run some of these tests and see what they look like. So I'm going to go ahead and open Cypress here. 
and we're going to run our NGRX tests. All right, so that was pretty fast. <laughs> Let's go ahead and break down step by step uh, what happened there. So our first test is validating the get all success action. And again, this is saying that when the page loads, we expect the get all success action to run and we expect it to have a prop pass through of the shows and that it should have a length of four because we have four shows on our page initially. So with the Cypress test runner and the command log, you can actually uh, hover over each command and see what's happening in your DOM as the test proceeds. So again, uh, initially we're just visiting our application and we can see here that we have our four shows Initially, we're just validating via the DOM. So we're saying that we expect there to be four show cards, uh, which there are, so that assertion passes. However, uh, with this part of the test, we're actually doing the assertion on the window, right? So here we're saying that the shows API get all shows success. And again, that is coming from the last action dispatched by our NGRX store. Uh, so we're saying that we expect the, the type to equal shows API get all shows success, which it does. And then we also expect that the shows array to have a length of four, and that is the second assertion here that's happening, that's passing. The next test that we're using is validating the favorite show clicked action and effect. And this is the really long one that I ran through. So I'm gonna go through the same thing here. So again, the first thing that we do is we visit our application and we can see um, it's you know kind of blank slate, nothing's been updated at that point. This is the first uh, favorite where we're dispatching it via the store. So we're invoking the all shows favorite show type and we're passing the show ID of one. And then this is where we're clicking uh, the second item. So this is equals one, so that's grabbing the second item in the array. So it's clicking the second show ID. And so we can go ahead and see here at this point that we now have two of the shows have been favorited. So we have the show ID of one, and then we have the second show in the array and both have been favorited and this assertion passed because we expect it to have a length of two and it does. So that's a DOM validation. Again, we can go further and we can actually validate via the NGRX store. So we can see here, we're grabbing our window and we're expecting that the last action dispatched by the NGRX store is favorite show success. And again, that's because we just dispatched favorite show clicked and because of our effect, we expect it to automatically dispatch favorite show success. And again, uh, we just clicked the second show here. So we expect the show ID to equal two, which it does. We also have some just additional validation uh, by going to the favorite shows tab here and just confirming that there are two favorite shows. So this is a Cypress test runner, and um, this is demonstrating how to validate your NGRX store, not only via the DOM, but via the store itself in the window. All right. So I wanted to share the re some resources again for learning more about this, uh, using this technique to test your NGRX store uh, with your end-to-end -end tests using Cypress. So uh, again, the GitHub repository is a link here. Uh, I'll be sharing the slides as well on the repository in case you need to revisit them. We also, I wanted to share the Cypress blog for testing the Redux store. Again, uh, that's specific to Redux, but a lot of the same methodologies and applications will work with NGRX. And again, also our Cypress documentation. So this is the one source of truth for Cypress if you want to learn more about getting started or some of the different things that you can do with our API. All right, so thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Again, I am Cecilia Martinez. I'm a success engineer at cypress.io, and you can catch me on Twitter at Cecilia Creates. That's probably the best way to get in touch with me. I'm also on GitHub at, as Cecilia Creates as well, so you can check out the repository for this talk and also some other things as well to learn about Cypress and software testing. Thanks again for your time and have a great day.